Welcome to our lesson for today. We are focusing on systems technology and we are going to look at how one needs storage and how do we really need to use our storage. There's different types of storages and we need to understand the storage as it differs according to what it stores. We have firstly our primary as well as secondary storage. Now we're going to explore these types of storages uh, separately. Primary storage. Primary storage holds the data and instructions temporarily. It works when the computer is on. It is electronic, it's fast, and it's expensive per gigabyte. And an example of that would be our RAM. Secondary storage, it stores programs and data permanently. It is magnetic, optical, slow, and it's cheaper per gigabyte. And then our example here, we can have our hard drive, our USBs, and CDs. All right, then we're going to move on to our online storage. Now, online storage is where one is able to store data and information on the Internet. So it's unlike where you store it directly onto your uh, hard drive on your computer. Now, what happens with online storage is that companies will allow users to save data on their server. Now, sometimes it can be for a specific fee and sometimes it can be for free. Now, whenever you have to choose between online storage, it would depend on whether you want to use a specific company or you just want to use what is provided for free by, for example, Google Drops, uh, Docs, sorry, uh, Dropbox, as well as Copy. Now, some advantages of online storage would be access anywhere. There's more storage on your PC. You can download and store data immediately. No need to send email because files are easy to share. When computers crash, you know that you still have your data as backup. Then if we look at some of the disadvantages of online storage, you need internet connection in order to use it. Some online storage have cost where you have to pay a fee. If a company closes or is out of business, it means that data can be lost because they won't warn you to say we are out of business. Um, another disadvantage, you have no full control on backup as well as security unless you obviously save online and then you have to save somewhere else on your own personal storage device. And then another one is that hackers can gain access if the security of that um, online storage is not strong enough. Right, lastly, online storage differs from cloud computing because it only involves storing files online. Then we're going to move on to our storage media for backup. Now, backup is used to retrieve data from original data if data is lost, destroyed, or damaged. Now, if you think about this, let's say you had your data saved on your computer and your computer crashes. It means that your original data is lost. But if you did make backup, say maybe on a USB, CD, or external hard drive, it means you have backup data. Now, this data is actually backup of the original data. Right. Now, our suitable media storage can be you can use your external hard drives, you can use CDs or DVDs, you can use USBs, and you can use memory cards. So whatever external storage that is suitable for you, you can be able to use it. And again, it depends on the data that you are storing. So you cannot just choose to use, uh, let's say, for example, a CD if you want to store large amounts of data which need you to have more than four gigs of um, storage device. All right. Now, this is obviously meant for storing your data and obviously keeping it safe 
if your original data gets lost. And then we're going to look at interpreting adverts in terms of storage. Now, when you interpret adverts, you should already know the purpose of your PC and what is needed. Now, in this advert, you're going to focus on the three types of storage. Now, to be able to interpret your storage device, we need to know our secondary storage as well as our primary storage. Now, from this, you can see that we have a 320 gig of hard drive and we have 1024 megabytes of RAM. So those are the two types of storage that we have and remember one is permanent and one is temporary. So now whenever you see an advert you need to be able to know which items from this list actually indicate what we call our primary as well as our secondary storage. Right. Then sometimes whenever you use your computer, you might have problems with your devices. Now, troubleshooting simply means that you, uh, you try to solve a problem by following a process where your hardware or software does not behave the way it is expected to. Now, when you have a problem with your CD or your DVD, what you can do is you can make sure that your CD or DVD is clean and if you have problems with burning, whenever you want to burn data onto your CD, you make sure that the speed is not low and your space is not um, uh, small. Make sure that the space of your CD in terms of the data that you're burning is big enough in order to handle that data that you're trying to burn. Then managing backups. Now, whenever you manage backups, it means that you are storing original data on another external storage device. Now, it simply means that what you need to do is compress the data or remove the data from your computer into another external storage device so that you can have more storage space on your computer. All right, so how you manage your backup making sure that the device where you saved your original data, a copy of your original data is actually stored safely where it will not be damaged. Then other examples of troubleshooting, we have disk defragmentation. Now disk defragmentation recognizes parts of files that were scattered and then it allows your computer to actually be faster. So what it does is after your files has been scattered because of saving, installing, deleting, and uninstalling files, once your files were uh, all over the, the, the hard drive, then your disk defragmenter will bring them together close to one another, and then it allows uh, faster access to, the, to that document or to that uh, file. Then we have disk scanning. Disk scanning, it checks a drive for errors as well as back uh, sectors. For example, if you had some um, systems or applications that were not responding well. Now, for problem solving, if you want to solve, you can go to system tools or maintenance in programs on the start, and then you can be able to get troubleshooting in your control panel. Thank you for joining us for this lesson. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.